Okay, Nia, I apologize for the, the lateness of this. Um, but we want to find the, the domain um, algebraically. We want to make sure that we understand that the denominator, we cannot have division by zero. That's one of the key things. You can't have division by zero. You can't take square roots uh, of negative numbers. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come to the side and just write x squared minus 1 cannot be 0. Hopefully this doesn't keep coming up like this. So once I have this as x squared minus 1 uh, cannot be 0, I'm going to still solve this like it was a normal equation. So this is going to, because it's quadratic, it's going to factor to x plus 1, x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So that says x plus 1 cannot equal 0 and x minus 1 cannot equal 0 so then x cannot equal negative 1 and x cannot equal positive 1. So those are my two issues. So if I was on a number line and I'm graphing my solutions at negative 1 and positive 1 we should have open dots there. Everywhere else will be shaded in. Okay, so how do I how do I determine how do I represent this region here? Well, if we go from the left, it starts at negative infinity, and it comes up to negative one, but doesn't touch negative one. So I need to put a parenthesis there. Then to get this region, okay, it starts at negative one, but really not. It starts just to the right of negative one. It's going to finish just to the left of positive one, so that's why I put parentheses there. And then to get this last section, it's going to be everything to the right of one up to infinity. And then we've got to make sure we union all these things. And what that does is that this basically tells us when that grouping right there, when we've got this union and these two numbers are the same numbers shared by that union, and you get the same thing going on here, and that those two numbers that are shared by that union are essentially getting removed. They're getting kicked out. So uh, really what's going on here, the way I read this, is we, we have negative infinity all the way up to infinity. That's our, our domain. But these were the problems, so those got kicked out. Negative 1 and positive 1. Um, question 3, so you had, it says you had question 3. Okay, so all we're going to do here is take our x minus 1, that's our input, okay, uh, and we're going to plug it into these two spots of, of t. So h of t was t plus 3 over t. Now it's asking you h of x minus 1. So instead of t, like we're seeing here, it's going to be x minus 1. So go x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 1. Um, now I'm assuming WebAssign will actually accept that. Um, if you want to combine this into, um, you know, find like terms, common denominator, all that kind of stuff, you can. So, um, let me write this as x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 1. So, this would be over 1, that's over 1. If I wanted to multiply this by x minus 1 over x minus 1, x minus 1 over x minus 1, we could do this. So, I would have x times x minus 1 over x minus 1. That's that multiplication right there. Minus 1 times x minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 1. So this should give me x squared minus x. If I multiply that out there, this could be minus x plus 1 then plus 3 all over x minus 1. Go ahead and rewrite that as x squared minus 2x plus 4 all over x minus 1. So that would be an alternative to this here. Um, and if, if I'm ever questioning whether I'm doing that right, um, I would come to, let's see here. Awesome.
Well, we go to Jewish. I don't know why my Desmos isn't working. Um, so I'm just gonna type in x minus one, and I'm, I'm instead of using x because I don't want the graph. Well, I can. Let's go. Let's see if the graph looks the same. Uh, so we we'll go x minus one plus then now it's gotta be three over x minus one. I gotta put it in parentheses like that. And you see that that does write out uh, eventually how I wrote it by hand. Uh, we can see what that graph looks like. It's that thing there. Um, and now if I graphed the other version, which is x squared, it's got to be in parentheses up top, x squared minus 2x plus 4 over x minus 1. You see that it graphs right on top of the same exact curve, so that tells me that the red and the green are equivalent versions of one another. Um, another way you could have done it is write that one down, write that one down, choose a value for x. So let's say and a lot of times when I do this, I don't I don't necessarily use um, x's. Like I, I was going to go to GeoGebra or Desmos I use like the letter A or something. Um, so it'd be A minus 1 plus 3 over A minus 1, A squared minus 2A plus 4 over A minus 1, and then tell it, well, I want A to be 5. But here I'll just say X equals 5 and see what it evaluates as. Well, I guess I gotta do it this way. F of 5 evaluates as a 19 force, and then G of 5 should give me the same 19 force than it does. So that's a that's a way to see if the way you simplified things uh, is still, is that still identical to this in regards to the algebra. Um, but like I said, I think it, it will it will accept that right there as a result. Um, and I would too, on a test or a quiz, I would accept that. Hopefully that helps. Uh, and again, I apologize uh, that uh, that took forever for me to get to you. So what I'm going to do with you, I emailed you this, but um, I'll give you plenty of time uh, to, if you were waiting on a response or even if you went in and answered it because you knew the due date was coming and you wanted to get it done, you don't want to be incomplete uh, and you got it wrong or whatever. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, however, because it, it was my fault in getting, getting something out to you. So um, hope everything's going well. If you got any questions, keep them coming. Um, have a great rest of the evening and have a good day tomorrow.